Hey guys, this is a uh, Black117 here, and today we'll be doing our PFA uh, Season uh, 9 uh, Finals Battle as we're up against Winwick. And as you can see, well, there's a championship game, so we'll see how this goes between me and Winwick. So, for those of you who haven't, uh, who didn't watch the team builder, I'll do a quick rundown of the teams that we both could have brought. So, um,. Basically, he has Spectre, Cartana, Torn, Lucario, Stunfisk, Raconid. Other threats were possibly that were possibly brought or were not ever want to say were Neolego, Mandibuzz, um, Chandelure, Verizian, and Mega Blastoise. So already, I'm looking at this matchup and I'm like, how am I going to deal with uh, like looking at his team? I already know that he's gonna bring hazards, and he could bring like spikes, and sticky webs, sticky webs with a rack grenade. Rocks is obviously probably gonna be on a uh, stun fisk, and there are possibly two sweepers or three, depending on what it is a rack grenade or the uh, cart. Well, obviously Cartana and Lucario are they're gonna be the cleaners. So yeah. So looking at this game, I was debating on which Pokemon I, I wanted to bring, so... In the end, I decided I would do with D6. I pretty much brought Scarf Coco, the same as last time. I brought a defensive Sweet, uh, Suicune with uh, HP Flying, Scald, Sub, Scald, Calm Mind. Pretty much the same set from last time, just more Spadef in general. Um, Nita Queen is a little bit more uh, mixed defense, but, but on, with a more of his focus on defense. And Sylveon's more especially defensive, just to handle his special threats, which he didn't bring. Garchomp's more uh, physically defensive, but slightly more focused in like uh, HP, defense, speed. And then the Cario is more defensive, semi-defensive, and to deal with the uh, Cartana. So, already looking at his team, I'm pretty much uh, debating uh, whether or not to uh, lead with uh, Garchomp or Coco. But the fact that he has Stunfisk implies that, and Araquan implies that, of course, he has, he's going to try to hazard at me, with, especially with the Kleski. Or just spread as much paralysis, toxic as possible for his wall breakers to go in. So I kind of wanted to go with, in this with this game, having three Pokemon at least immune to paralysis. So and having a heal beller in general. So at least uh, I w that's pretty much the idea. So but in terms of leads, I, I felt like Chomp just has a good matchup in almost every case, with the exception of any Araquanid. But even then, I had like Rock Slide. So anyway, so. Uh, that's pretty much the plan, so I'm just gonna lead to a chomp, and yeah, go to the word, and I go to the, the X. And already, this is kind of a weird um, lead on my end, in a way, because um, Torn is flying, well, obviously, it's, it's a flying bird, so, and uh, I'm debating right now whether to switch on to Sylveon or just go for rocks. And honestly, going for rocks ain't that bad here. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to get too chipped down, so maybe he could, like, overpredict and just go for U-turn in general, so, um, at, at that response, I decide, you know what, I'm just gonna go for my rocks. If he goes to Klefki, like, off of prediction or whatever, or Raquinid, I at least have rock slide, so I'm just gonna go for my rocks to at least chip these guys down. He goes for the Hidden Power Ice, as I'm able to live that pretty nicely, and I just get in, like rocks for it for at the cost of getting like Garchomp 60% chunk so this isn't that bad because I guess I could rely on like getting slow chip damage on from his team especially from Earth Power or Earthquake on Stunfisk or even if the E speed to Lucario if he has it so um of course I kind of want to switch out because if he is knockoff I don't want to lose my berry so here I decide I'm gonna go into my uh, Sylveon as Hurricane doesn't even do anything to me at all, so that's pretty nice. So here, I kind of make a more aggressive play and decide, you know what, I'm just going to go for a Hyper Voice. Try to gauge the damage on uh, this uh, this Klefki or either Klefki or Raquinid or whatever the hell, like, Korn just wants to switch into. Because I'm thinking, yeah, he's going to try to switch into Klefki, so um, here. Here he goes for the knockoff, to removing the item. And I'm just going to go for Hyper Voice, and it barely does anything. And at this point, I know that this thing is kind of bulky as hell. So 
He goes to Tom as I go for a wish. And here is where things just get interesting because he has the cleft key in and I'm pretty much deciding, okay, should I go into uh, Garchomp again and risk the fairy move or do I just go with Needle Queen? And just, uh, because at this point I feel like staying in with Sylveon would be nice. But at the same time, like, uh, I could always recover up against Torn and against Stunfisk if it's especially, if it's especially offensive. And also with Klefki if it's like, if it doesn't have anything for me, so... I do feel like this thing, the way he brought it in, is that he probably has spikes and he probably has stock, like, you know, status options. So, I don't know if he's gonna be the same calm mindset as before, so... I decide, you know what, I'm just gonna go with Nidoqueen because I at least chipped that thing down. So, I'm just gonna go for Nidoqueen. If he gets any chip on me, then I get to kill up, so... Unfortunately, he just goes for spikes, and that's pretty much a dead wish, so... Here, I decide, you know what... Um, this is a pretty much a tricky turn, because I'm debating, should I just go for Earth Power, or just scout out for the, uh... Um... For the Magnet Rise. Because, I'm like, thinking to myself, this Klefki has to have an attacking option. At least one. Like, either an attacking option... Uh, status option because it, the fact that he real spikes implies that he doesn't have the calm mindset as before. So, so here I decide, you know what, I'm going to go for the, uh, um, I'm gonna go for the, uh, like the earth power because if he goes for spikes again, I could get some good chip on it. Turns out he has it, so, and I pretty much get played right there. So yeah, he goes for a second layer of spikes, and I just go for flamethrower. And at this point, I know this thing is especially defensive. So, and I kind of really don't have anything else to do outside just going for flamethrower. And he does have leftover, so yeah. Um, he does go to, to the Araquanid as he's going to take that flamethrower pretty well. But he is going to get chipped down, so I know at this point this is probably a hatch stacking uh, team pretty much full. No shit, because like he's just going into his mods and just getting like the hazards he needs to... To, uh like win with this game and i'm like all right so what basically what i know i can infer from this like his lucario and his uh and his uh carton are likely sd so um so this is already like very uh alarming for me because uh like a raccoonid can just not only a raccoonid could threaten all my mods it could already set up sticky webs if it wants to so here I decide, okay, should I go to Suicune at this point, or just stay in and like, you know, uh, go for the Toxic, you know, try to wear this Arachnid down. Obviously, I think staying in is pretty dumb, because if I lose Needle Queen, I lose in a way to, to deal with the rest of his team pretty well. You know, Kartana, Klefki, like, Dunfisk, and Lucario, so I feel like keeping Needle Queen, like, healthy as possible, especially with the spikes up, uh, is key here. So, I do have Protect, so, on my secret, so if I could just go with Gradual Recovery with Black Sledge, that's fine. So here, I go to Suicune, and yeah, I go to that, and he misses a Toxic. And I'm not gonna lie, that Toxic miss is pretty huge, because now, that pretty much ensures that, um, um, that Suicune can get a, a, a sub guaranteed, unless he is like a very offensive Araquanid with like, you know, choice ban. But obviously, he would have to switch out, so. Um, or Life Orb, and Life Orb will probably ship him down than he should, more than he should. I think he could break my uh, sub with Splash Plate, or whatever water boosting item, depending on what he has. But, but so I think it's a 1 in 4 chance for him to break the sub, so. Here I decide, you know what, I'm just gonna go for a sub. As he goes hard torn, and now we are in the game where, where uh, it's probably in my favor, because at this point I could just start going for the combines, and just hope for the like hurricane misses. And honestly, because hurricane does have inaccuracy of seven, he has it has a, it's pretty much seventy percent inaccurate, or not seventy percent, but like it's seventy percent accurate. And that 30% adds up over time, so pretty much I can guarantee that like at, in, in over the next couple of turns he's gonna miss some perk here and there, but then again he could just hit a wall, so so yeah. 
Um, the idea is to try to set up like combines because I am built to like set up on like a bulky torn. So yeah, here he goes for the first hurricane and connects, and I go for a combine. Now I'm not so sure whether he's gonna go for knockoff because if he goes for knockoff, that means he's gonna keep. He's gonna let me have a sub instead of going for a hurricane. He could possibly getting a confusion on me, which could be just as annoying. So I think here he's gonna go for the knockoff. So I just go for the sub. I'm okay with him getting rid of my leftovers in exchange for this. Because at this point I know I could set up on this torn. Or at least uh, take it on 1v1. So I'm not I'm fine with sweet losing sweet Kieran in this situation to get rid of Torn. Because at this point it does imply that I at least well not imply but this means that if i have a sub up i can at least ensure that uh something like cartana is going to get like chipped down with skull and maybe get a, a skull burn so here he goes for the hurricane and he misses but looking at my calc that doesn't like break my sub so he needs to at least you could see now that it doesn't break the sub as i go for a skull knock out this torn so already we got rid of a huge threat out of the way and he goes into another huge threat. And to be honest, this is where the fun begins if you think about it. So, um, at this point, I'm thinking to myself, okay, how the hell am I going to deal with this Cartana? Outside of, you know, I'm going to scald it. So, um, at least we'll know exactly what set this is. So, um, as he takes rocks. Here he goes for the Leaf Blade as he's kind of forced to. And I'm going for scald. And it turns out this thing is very, very spadef. Because I've seen this Spadef Cartana used a lot in VGC, so... Um, but still, we have put it in range of Thunderbolt, still, with Coco, so... That's pretty nice. Um, and here I decide, you know what, of course I had to switch to Scizor, because uh, I also want this thing to get Rocky Helmet Chip damage. And it is now at 37%, so... Already, this is pretty much looking in our favor, so... And at this point, I could just pretty much... I could predict whatever, like, at this point I'm going to go for U-turn because I don't want to give Lucario or Arachnid its sweep setup. And I thought that going for Roost was semi-passive, so I felt that going to Chomp was better here since I could also activate my Berry thanks to Spikes. And that's pretty much the idea of why I had, like, Berry Chomp, so... Uh, getting that, like, recovery, like, in mid-battle like that. So now I'm healthy as usual, and I could throw in the Stunfisk. Unfortunately, I'm very um, bulky jump, so as you'll see, I'm not going to be able to knock out this uh, Stunfisk. So he gets up rocks, so this is really bad for me. So he's able to get out the rocks, but of course I can uh, go for the Earthquake again. So I could go for the Earthquake again and knock this thing out. So at this point, I could threaten out whatever the hell he sends in. Whether it's Rock Slide, I could knock out Rock with Rock Slide, I could... Um, deal with Cartana with Leaf Blade and Lucario with Earthquake. The... However, this is where I have to admit, this is where like the game gets pretty interesting. So, here I decide I kind of want to predict the Magnet Rise since I saw it last time. And I kind of wanted to go for the Flame, like, I want Flamethrower to at least guarantee that I can uh, get Coco to knock this thing out. So I go for flamethrower, and yeah, and at this point I kind of here I'm just thinking about the long term, in terms of the long term game because at this point um he has no electric switch ins and Kurt and Tapu Koko could just go in versus his entire team. If Lucario is bulky, like that could be a problem. But we have Coco in versus his team, and I have like multiple like uh, ways to deal with like well not the multiple but like. I could at least ensure that Lucario can't set up for free, so, um, and he has to attack what's in front of him. I think the only Pokemon that could, like, probably prevent this is probably, like, Scizor, maybe Suicune, but everything else just threatens it for two shots, so, and even Suicune could just go for a Scald Burn, so, so I just gotta make sure I don't let Lucario set up, so, for whatever reason, but in this situation here, I feel like I, I think I need like Garchomp for the late game. So I decide I decide, you know what? Since he's already gonna like spike hazard me down, I might as well just try and get him to sack me in the first place. And I go over Suicune. 
Now, I know this is a very questionable play. Instead of, like, staying in with Chomp and just gradually dying via, like, um, Toxic. But I felt like having the Rough Skin, like, would be very helpful. At least being able to check Kartana or, like, uh, Lucario in the end. And giving me a free sack, in a way. And whereas, Lucar whereas Suicune, I don't see where it, what it can do. So, here I decide I, I want Suicune, like, uh, gone in a way. So, for my team, so... I just go for Suicune, and he goes for another layer of spikes, so he has all his hazards up in terms of damaging the hazards. So, unfortunately, that's really bad for us. But I already accepted that this was going to be a case, so... At this point, I'm like, okay, what do we do here? Because we could pretty much... We could just keep going for Scalds. Or just switch into Sylveon if he does, if he does not do anything. Because Sylveon's also a sack at this point, so yeah. Um... Here, he actually goes to a Raquinid, and actually, this is where, this is where, like, I, it really dawns on me that I kind of made a mistake here, like a great mistake, because at this point, I realized that a Raquinid just now gets up sticky webs, and, and there's another bigger problem, is that I have to get a free switch in no matter what, I'm trying to get in Coco all times because if I can get Coco in I could pretty much win this game right then and there but of course like uh, it's a lot of 50 50s at this point so and I'm just trying to figure out okay do I go switch into Coco now or do I like uh, you know like like go hard Sylveon and just like have him go for a liquidation and if he doesn't go for liquidation and like you know let's say uh, I not hyper voice, so uh, uh well yeah, I, I pretty much hyper voice their rack when it's so if I switch into Sylveon, so at this point I try to get Suicune in as a sack. And he goes in, try to, to sack his Araquanid, so at this point I know what he's trying to do. And at this point I'm like, alright, I fucked up. And I'm guaranteed to have to play with with uh stick flips now. The worst case scenario for me now is if I crit this thing. Because if I crit the Araquanid, I pretty much give Lucario free setup. Or, well, that's pretty much what it looks like. Because that's the only way he could win. So, what happens is, I crit the, the Araquanid. And, as you could probably tell from this confusing replay and postcom, I really didn't want that to happen. And I know I could I could have just put click Scald, but I checked in my damage calculator that Hidden Power Flying doesn't have a chance to Oko a Raquinid. So outside of getting a crit, and I got a crit. And I didn't want to go Sylveon because I just felt like I didn't know like okay. It just felt weird this situation because I, I could have at least ensured that like one of my Pokemon could have died or got sacked off. But at this point, it just really just dawned on me, like, like, yeah, this is, I just fucked this up, like, really hard. Because, as you'll see, like, now this Lucario just comes in, and unless this thing is Life Orb, and I get a burn, this game just goes to shit completely. So, Dogs is just gonna go, go for the E-Speed, is just proceed to just destroy my team, as you'll see. I do have Rocky Helmet, but and Bullet Punch, but as you'll notice, it's not enough. He goes for Close Combat. If he actually went for this E Speed, I probably won right there, because I would have ensured that I at least got up BP damage, and like he would have. Uh, well, I, he went for I would have gotten BP advantage on what it would, but like he would have to get another round of like, uh, you know, like rough, rough, like Rocky Helmet. So yeah, and as you can see, we don't have enough. He's still healthy enough to the point where he's going to live like these hits. So, yeah. Like, at this point, this game is pretty much over. Unless he uh, misses Meteor Mash. I know I had Protect here. But at this point, I just knew that if he had Earthquake, it's over. So I just acknowledged that. I would just try to dodge the, uh, the Meteor Mash. I could also go for Protect to make a better roll. But I didn't want to play around with the... Well, at this point, he's probably going for the, like, the sweep. 
So I could have gone for protect here, but yeah. As he as you see, um he's gonna proceed to sweep me. So as the Lucario. Just because I got an unwanted crit on the Araquanid. And yeah. I mean that's how games go sometimes when uh you try to sack something and you just fuck it up in some worst way possible. So yeah. Anyways, um, good GG's to win, as uh, unfortunately we weren't able to win this game and uh, not win another title, as we're going to be runner-ups for this season. Now, to be honest, I feel like, I feel like I didn't, to give Wins credit, I think he knew what he wanted to do to win this game, whereas I kind of didn't. And I think that was a huge ultimate deciding factor here. Because as you saw, like, I kept switching in and out with Garchomp, Suicune, and I didn't want to, like, I already knew that I didn't want to keep doing that too much. Because with all the hazards being set up, and I needed to, ooh. and then, at the time, I thought having Suicune, or not having Suicune, but, like, having Garchomp would be good to have rough skin damage on either Kartana or Lucario while having a sack. And the idea was to have, um, to pretty much sack the, uh, Suicune. Because I thought he was going to have, like, Play Rough or Dazzling Gleam. And out of all my mons, Suicune was the most low HP mon. So... Hey guys, so... Um, I just came back... Uh, re-recording this, uh, outro because... Um, on top of the whole... Lacking quality... I figured that I might as well, like, redo the... Uh, the, the outro because I didn't really properly explain some stuff that occurred during the game in terms of like my like wind conditions and whatnot. And to be fair, um, I'm gonna try to keep this as short as possible, probably within like 10 minutes. Um, since of course this is finals, and uh, I would like to explain where what, what went wrong in this game, so um, but start out like i'll give uh credit to my opponent uh when uh he actually pretty much brought a team that pretty much a team that that first of all i knew that it was coming and uh and that something that i could have that i really didn't have much answers for because let's be real like spikes hazard offense is just something that i that can give teams without any reliable deep fuckers especially like when your best deep fuckers are like literally um um like weak to like priority as well so or or their damage output so in this case uh Wynn just brought the team that just pretty much like says like fuck it just like i'll set up hazards and like uh apply as much offensive pressure as you can so of course um uh that's i mean credit to where his credits do so that's uh, one thing I'll I'll mention. So the other thing that um um I wanted to talk about, and this is probably gonna be the main point of this video, so is regarding um so regarding uh basically like the turn between Araquanid and Suicune. So um I I kind of like I didn't really address it that much in that video in the first in the, the during the part where like my Araquanid got created. Or not a Raconid, but the Suicune got the crit onto the Araquanid. Um Basically, um that first of all I'll acknowledge that I fucked up that turn. Trying to get Suicune as a sack because I thought that um no, naturally knowing Clef Key's uh three attacks, like I think it was at the time it was like uh Toxic Magnet Rise, uh Spikes. I thought it would have like something like Dazzling Gleam. Flash Cannon, Foul Play, something that would knock out Suicune out of range of, uh... <laughs> so that way, like, I could get, like, in one of my Pokemon, let's say Tapu Koko, for free. But instead, that pretty much put me in a situation that I was pretty much stuck. And he didn't have an offensive move as well to kill me, so... He wanted, he also wanted to sack his, uh, Klefki at that turn, so... Um... And that already was a very difficult, um, 
like that was kind of difficult for me to decide between whether to sack Guard Jump, which already has a toxic timer, or sack Sleekun, which um doesn't have leftovers and upon Rock's reentry is gonna be like at twelve percent. So it wouldn't be able to do much outside of scalding stuff on switch ins if they tried to do that, which I don't think in this situation Win would even dare try to like risk uh, you know, that, especially on the Cario. But we'll get to that in a bit, so um basically this whole game um pretty much came down to that crit. Like the crit onto the Raconade with my in power flying Suicune essentially gave him the momentum he needed to like uh uh get into Lucario and then the whole game came down to basically what well, was essentially a fifty fifty. Well not a fifty fifty well not a fifty fifty in the in the traditional sense, but like um but a collective fifty fifty in terms of whether one I get a skull burn either a skull burn, a crit on his Lucario as he SDs up two and also da high damage rolls keep in mind with that of uh, two whether Lucario can land uh meteor mashes on my Minito Queen um and basically and three well then again like Lucario already took like like would have died to earth power so it doesn't really matter on that on that end so um but basically um basically between a collective when I mean by a collective fifty fifty it was basically like a it's basically like what it was point seven it was a point seven chance that I don't get a scald on his uh, Lucario and also like a it depends on this like depends on my needle queen spread and also because of spikes hazards because it the way they depicted it was like what I had like sixty nine HP uh, upon hazard reentry um well needle queen's just getting into the battle for the first time and then um basically speaking um like basically speaking I had like a twenty five percent chance to uh live the attack let alone a 10 percent chance of him missing so yeah that's what i that's where i would say that the 50 50 occurred and honestly that's where i knew like the minute i knew that the crit i got the crit onto the lucario i knew that like the, the only way i win was to get any of those and it was out of my control yeah well in a weird way it was already like in a weird way like i kind of like um, I didn't really assess this game very well. Like, I probably could have like let Chomp be sacked instead. So, yeah, instead of like, um, like weak here because in my thought process, I thought maybe a healthy Chomp, if I ever get default removal or like. I could use that as a sack for like you know like let's say like for Katana or like for Lucario, especially because of rough skin damage, whereas Suicune wasn't really useful at all. So that wasn't that was a huge error on my end. So that I would acknowledge. So um, basically speaking, if I hadn't gotten the crit, um, I would have he would have set up sticky webs like when confirmed this to me and. Uh, from there, my plan was basically the way I was thinking about this was I was supposed to um pretty much like with a rack okay once the rack when it sets up sticky webs as I I'll go for hidden power flying assuming I don't crit the the thing it, it pretty much lives on like a sliver of HP and I basically sack um Sylveon to the Araquanid and I just use Suicune as a I switch out Sweet Tune, essentially speaking, and I pretty much use Sweet Tune as a sack for Cortana, so that way Cortana doesn't get like a plus one raise. So, and then I go Chomp into Araquanid, and then I can click EQ since it's Araquanid's weak. And let's be clear and honest, like he's not switching out. Like, um, this is not he's not switching out Araquanid at all in this situation because uh, it's already done its job. So. Um, in this situation, um, he would probably have gone to 
Cartana because Lucario would have still had like like I don't think he would have risked like the like um Lucario being outsped by the like, Garchomp, so he probably would have go to like uh to Cartana instead just to pr apply offensive pressure. And then it really depends on one of the one one of or both of those situ situations because well very likely goes to Cartana. And then from there I go um, Suicune as a sack since it's already like 12% so all those hazards will kill it. And then I go to, to Scizor which would have been at like 33%. And then the whole game would have came down to what he does. Um, it would have came down to whether or not um, Scizor, like whether I decide to go for U-turn or Roost. I'll probably been more likely to pick Roost because um, I need Scizor alive to like pretty much deal with Cartana. Like, none of my Pokemon can deal with it, and Cortana in under Sticky Web's a pain in the ass. But everything else with Scarf Coco, Scarf Coco can clean against Lucario at Clefki, but it, it can't beat the Cortana. So, um, basically, um, in that situation, if he sacks, let's say, uh, there's like several situations there. Let's say if Cortana, uh, and it's, I was also assuming that Cortana locks himself into Leaf Play because. I was already assuming that like Cartana was already is scarfed. And it turns out it was, so um at that point I'll probably um at that point I would try to either roost as the one switches to either Clefki or Lucario or two it just attacks me with the uh, Leaf Blade. Hopefully he doesn't get a crit because I need kinda need as much HP as possible to live a hit from Lucario. Um uh, as I'll explain. Uh Basically speaking, um, if he were to switch out the Clef Key, then there was a higher chance I would win the game because from there I just click U turn with the with the against Clef Key as it actually goes for Thunder Wave. That was actually its last move, so Clef Key had like no attacks at all. So, and then um, basically I would click U turn and uh, kill Coco, and then I'd defog, but. But from that, I have pretty much I could get into Nita Queen for free, um, unless he like basically there's the only way he counters this is if he just hard reads this and goes Lucario. So then I go Nita Queen, and then I could deal with like both Lucario and Cortana while being at full, at basically near full HP, and I have Scizor for like the uh, the like the like what. What is it, the car, the Cortana? So, if he uh, goes into Lucario, then the game comes down to like uh, basically whether he crits me or not, and also like when I mean by crits me, he has to get like double crits. Like, first of all, like let's say if I click, like if he uh, goes into Lucario as I go Roost on Scizor, there I just click U-turn. As he just likely goes for SD. I don't think he clicks like I, d I really don't think he clicks like close combat when he lowers his defenses. Could be a good play, could be a bad play. I don't know. So, um, and then from there, um, I go Needle Queen against uh, a Lucario that's like basically boosted. But here's the thing, um, Lucario, um, doesn't have Life Orb doesn't have earthquake and that's something I, I would have scouted for so I would have probably went for protect but at this point I like um even if um I didn't go for protect I still had a good like I think around 68% chance also like a 10% chance of him missing and then even then I have like a around close to around an 80% chance to knock out Lucario with earth power and if I do knock out Lucario, then uh, I could go to Scizor, which would have been like around 40%, 45%, and then I could just BP it. And then like, Artana, at that point, I could like, I could BP the, like Lucario because it's already at low HP. And then Cartana, but Lucario will probably go for E speed. And then I barely live around like about a couple percentages. And then Cartana, if Cartana or Klefki comes out, if it's Cartana, then I just click BP, 
But if it's Kleckley, I 100% go for the Roost because that's pretty much the way I win that game because I have Rocky Helmet and I could chip down Lucario for a kill and also Cortana for a kill. And yeah, that's how I would have won. Um, the same scenario occurs if he tries to sack um, Cortana. But if it if he sacks the Cortana against my Lucar uh, against my Scizor, what I would have done is he pretty much would have denied me just a U turn, and it would have been the same situation. Only except I would try to like, um, basically um, I'll, I'll try to pro I'll try to protect in that situation. At least guarantee to you I'm out of range. So yeah. And I will acknowledge this, I did mess up by not going for Protect on Lucario when I when I did, like, earlier on this game. You know, not early on, but, like, you know, during the later part of the game. Because at that point, I was kind of, like, pretty annoyed about getting the crit, him getting the crit with Lucario. And that's pretty much, like, or, like, not getting the crit, but, like, getting the crit on the Araquanade. I was kind of really pissed off. And I was kind of like, I, like, I was pretty much very tempered at that point because I was like, but I knew that if I just cooled off, cooled off a bit, I could have just protected and scouted whether or not Lucario indeed had Life Orb or, or and or Airquake. And if he did, he I would have lost for sure. But I should have just went for protect. So yeah, that was that's that one's on me. So, um, so long story short, um. I made two mistakes with the uh, Garchomp and with the uh, also Needle Queen, like by not protecting or like staying in, and uh, and I switched me switching into like Suicune also costed me the game. So yeah, um, basically that, um, I I do think I kind of fucked up this game. So yeah, um, I had like some very okayish win cons, but. Even then, like, uh, the sweet green one was obviously the one I was going with. Like, assuming I didn't go for the crit. I didn't get, like, crit. Crit against me or whatever. So, yeah. But, the point I'm saying is that what I was trying to go for was try to get a free switch into Coco or Nidoqueen. Or mostly Coco. To the point where, like, I could just clean sweep him with Thunderbolt. So, yeah. I mean, sometimes I just um things just don't work out in your favor and you just like like basically um it's just um i think this was a combination of me just overthinking it and i just should have just stayed in because part of me didn't want this game to come down to like a rock side miss on araquanid with garchomp if you try to switch in the flamethrower because at that point i would just spam flamethrower like endlessly if to catch the cartana because I know that Cartana could be a paid in the ass. Um, so that was the, that's when Garchomp was up against Klefki. So, and uh, and if it gets into a it, then I would have been sure that um Rockslide would kill. But yeah, um, if it misses, then basically it sets up Stick Web. So that would have been probably the better play. So yeah, staying in with Chomp. It's just that I thought maybe um. I could sack. I thought like sacking Suicune was a better call, and he could just uh, kill me off. But that just didn't work out. So yeah. So, anyways, um, um, GG's to uh, Winwork as he pretty much wins this season of PFA, the last one for uh, Gen Seven. So, um, before we move on to PFA season ten. So, um, basically, um, speaking. Um, in terms of what we're doing for Gen 8, um, for any draft leagues, I feel like I might return for a couple, but I, I think I'm going to just dial it down because, um, obviously, like, um, whenever I do draft league, I kind of want to have, like, I kind of want to, like, commit to it. Like, I know, like, when I want to do, like, draft league, I want to know that at least I can commit to it instead of, like, get overextended with stuff and especially with like you know stuff around like uh my guarding my life so um as i hear like a siren right now um 
basically speaking, I kind of want to like focus, like during this time, I kind of want to focus on Gen 8, like intro to Gen 8. So I might make more guides in general. Like, um, I don't know if I may join PFA for another season. I might, might not. I haven't really made that conscious decision, but it's whatever. So, and uh, and also if I if I even want to continue draft league because, um, I kind of want to like because the, it's not because I kind of want to like I don't want to like stop battling. It's just I kind of want to know what the format's gonna be like for Gen Eight. You know, get a feel of the new Pokemon, play the games and whatnot. So, I mean, at at, at the time of this video, like upload, I probably would have been like. I probably would one be already posting Gen Eight content, and two, this would probably be up like around late November, December ish. So, yeah. So, this is sort of like kind of a mini update, I guess you could say. So, um, but yeah, um, regarding like this game, I do think I, I do think I prepped very well, and I got like um some stuff right, but yeah. Well, anyways, that's all I have for today, and uh, and I'll see you guys next time, and um, very soon. So, anyways, uh, peace.